there are thousands of people groups that have never heard the gospel. They will never hear the gospel unless someone goes to them, learns their language for the very first time, and shares the good news of Jesus Christ with them. Hey Valley, we're the Rimsteads. My name is David, this is my wife Emily. We have a son, Calvin, a daughter Louise, and our brand newborn, Elizabeth Joy. We're currently serving in the country of Papua New Guinea, specifically among the Malayali people. God was extremely gracious to allow us to be a part of his big mission of going to find one of those groups who had not yet heard the gospel of Jesus Christ yet. In the fall of 2015, my husband Dave, along with our coworkers, heard about the Malayali people and that they had been asking for missionaries for over seven years. Their language is oral only. It's never been written down. The Malayali people do not know how to read and write. They've never held a pencil before. We wanted to translate God's word into their language. After making that initial contact with the Malayali people, uh, we cut a place so a helicopter could land and we started to cut down the trees in order to build our house in order to live long-term among the Malayali people. We actually had some teams from Valley come out and help us build those houses. Our houses uh, more than likely are standing today because of uh, faithful guys coming out from Valley and helping us build those houses. After the construction of our houses were built, we began to learn their language. So we'd walk out and we'd hear them say, Nguebe, Nguebe ne, Nguebe. And we'd say, okay, we need to write that down. So we started to write words down. And then weeks to months, we started to write sentences down, which turned into paragraphs, which turned into stories. And really, we have arrived at fluency. We have successfully learned their language and we have learned their culture while simultaneously building uh, trust and relationships with the Malayali people. I remember uh, one day hiking with my friend Kali. When you're going through the jungle, a lot of times there's tree bridges that have been cut down, trees that have been cut down, and you have to walk across them. Sometimes they're only like four feet off the ground, other times they're about like 20 feet off the ground. I was terrified of those tree bridges. Well, Kali noticed this after a while, and so she every time we would come to the tree bridge, she would come and hold my hand and help me get to the other side. This was months of Kali holding my hand, helping me walk to the other side, helping me through her garden, helping me learn language and one day as we were walking across the other side I got super emotional and we get to the other side and Kali says Emily why are you crying and I told her Kali for so many months now years you have been teaching me your language and teaching me about your life but there's gonna come a day where we're gonna switch and I'm gonna hold your hand and I'm gonna teach you God's talk and I'm gonna teach you how to read and write in your language and I cannot wait for that day one of my very best friends, I remember this clears day in the very beginning of language learning, that we had to go and take care of some medical problems and so a helicopter had landed. I'm in my office with my best friend and he looks at me and he says, David, can you just share with me the message that you've come to bring us? And I look at him and I say, man, I can't, I can't share with you the message yet. He says, but David, what if you don't come back and I can't hear this message? And I'm like, man, we're, we're gonna come back. Don't worry, we're gonna come back. And he gets up and says, what if I die and I haven't heard the message? And it was so hard in that moment because at that point we were still learning their language. How were we going to say love? They don't have a word for that. How are we going to teach them about forgiveness? They don't have a word for that either. Fast forward, we're in this new season of translating these portions. We are looking at Luke chapter 24, the resurrection of Jesus. Eric's sitting right next to me and we're looking at the passage together. The ladies are at the tomb and the angels are there and they say, why are you looking for someone who's alive among the dead? And Eric slaps the table and he whistles and he says, yes, Jesus can't be dead because he says he is the resurrection and the life. Well, we have gone and we have learned the language of the Malayali people 
And you guys, this next season, this year, we are about to share the good news of Jesus Christ with the Malayali people for the very first time. You guys have been with us from day one. Um, from back in 2015 when we set off to Papua New Guinea, you guys have been praying with us, encouraging us, supporting us in huge ways. This year is a big year for the Malayali people. This is the year that we will be able to present the gospel. We could not have done, we cannot do, and we will not be able to accomplish this work if it wasn't for you guys. We are so incredibly, so incredibly grateful for your guys' help in reaching the Malayali people with the gospel of Jesus Christ.